Hello and welcome back to lesson two of basic CNC programming for the CNC mill. In lesson one we talked about how to find X and Y coordinates in the Cartesian coordinate system and how to determine whether it's a plus or minus. So we're going to take it one step further in this lesson here and we're going to actually walk a half inch end mill around a two by two square. Now the first thing we need to know when we do that is where the origin is because that will determine the x plus and the y plus or x minus y minus. So as you can see I have pointed to this top left corner of the square being the origin so that's where x and y is zero. So first of all let's talk about what is plus and what is minus so anything on the right is x plus and anything below this line is y minus so that will that that's what we need to know to be able to determine our x and y values so we have a start point where the end mill is basically in line with its first path as it walks around this square then we have point one at corner one point two at uh, corner two and then three and four so we're going to determine the x and y values of these start points and points as it walks around and what the machine needs to know is what is the x y coordinate to the center of that tool everything on the cnc is based on the center line of that tool that we're using whether it's a half inch tool a quarter inch tool a one inch tool it's always to the center line of the tool. So I told you it was a half inch end mill. So as we are walking this around the square, it will be offset by half the distance so that the cutting edge is in line with the geometry of our square. So let's find the X and Y value of our start point. Now, normally we have some X, excess material. Uh, on the block that we're looking to remove we're making the finished pass here and so we're starting at a safe distance away so let's say we're starting at x minus a half an inch and then obviously we got this 250 offset so our first coordinate will be x minus 0.5 or x minus a half inch y plus 250 Alright, so then the first move we make is a straight line move to this corner here. Now we're going to go past this corner and get this edge at the end mill in line with the next side of the square. So, as you can see, uh, we have a 2 inch distance from x0 to this line, and obviously we have to add the 250 thousandths half the end mill for for this x value right here so that will be x two inches 250 and we're still seeing at y 250. all right on to number two again straight line past the corner you know uh, so that we're lining up for the next uh edge so we're going to get this edge of the end mill in line with the next piece of geometry we're going to be cutting so we're still sitting at x two inches 250 right here but now we have moved in y minus so this block is two inches so plus the 250 thousandths uh, offset for half the end mill so we're sitting at x two inches 250 y minus 2 inches 250. Alright, so let's, let's move on to point 3. Now this edge right here is, is where the x origin is located, so we're offset a quarter inch to the left side of it. So that will be x minus 250, and we're still sitting at y minus 2 inches 250. And then one last pass uh, to finish this last edge. And we're just going to go a quarter inch past 
this edge here and so we are still sitting at x minus 250 and y plus 250 so as you can see it's exactly what we learned in the first lesson it's simply finding the points that the end mill stops and then determining the x and y values of that location all right so let's take a look and see what happens when we use a quarter inch end mill versus a half inch end mill as you can see in red the um, center line of the tool path is a whole lot closer to the to our part because obviously our tool is physically smaller and the machine is just looking for the center line of the tool so therefore if the tool is smaller that center line is going to be closer to the part so let's take a quick look at those x and y values we're going to start off at a minus x375 safe distance now half of a quarter inch end mill is 125 so that is the amount offset from this edge Okay, that's that's our start point in Y. So point one is our next point. Still Y125, but our part is two inches. Again, 125 past this side of the part. So X two inches 125. Next point. Still X two inches 125, but Y is now two inches plus 125. Y minus two inches 125. Next point, we're now sitting on the minus side of x0, which is this edge right here. So x minus 125 and y still minus 2 inches 125. And our last point as we complete the square, still x minus 125. And we're back up to y plus 125 as we pass just a little bit past this corner. Alright, so you can see that with as the size of the end mill changes, obviously the coordinates used to machine the same geometry will also be different. So let's plug these numbers in to a program and let's see what happens if we accidentally leave out a minus. Alright, so we have plugged in our numbers into this small little program and we're going to verify that the coordinates that we picked will actually produce the square shape that we intended to make. So let's uh, step through this program here and make sure that our code is correct or that the coordinates that we found is correct. So here's our first straight line, second straight line, third and fourth. So that looks correct. So it's always good to verify your code. Uh, every machine has at least the graphics where you know you can see the cutter path and you will probably notice if something was wrong. And so let's on purpose remove a minus, one of these minus values is here and let's see what happens. All right, so here I have purposely removed the minus from this y minus 2 inches 250 on point 2. And so let's step through our program and see what happens when we forget to put a minus value on a coordinate. All right, so here's our first line that looks correct. Now we need to move to y minus 2 inches 250, and obviously it's going to the plus side. But what happens next is the next coordinate is correct, so it's going to find the shortest route there. So obviously it would go right through the middle of your part. And then that last line is correct. So the point of this exercise is to make sure that you got your plus and minus values correct because you will end up with a mess. So let's go on to the next video and let's talk about G-codes. See you there.